let's talk about one of the most important topics in special relativity, the Minkowski metric. But before I even discuss that and what it even means, I want to first talk about how we calculate distances in your typical good old-fashioned three-dimensional coordinate systems involving x, y, and z are well-known spatial coordinates. So let's draw our three-dimensional Cartesian coordinate system with our three axes. I'm going to label the axes with the coordinates x, y, and z that we're accustomed to. Suppose now that I have a line segment defined by its two endpoints A given by x, a, y, a, z, a, and B given by x, b, y, b, and z, b. Suppose also that I want to find the length of this line segment, a length which I'll call capital S. In this rectangular coordinate system, capital S would be defined using the difference between the values of x at the endpoints, which I'll call delta x, along with the difference in the values of y and z, which I'll call delta y and delta z, respectively. Now, how do I find s? Well, I can use the three-dimensional version of the Pythagorean theorem. Here's how it works. First, I calculate the length of the hypotenuse formed by the right triangle between delta x and delta y, so I've dotted that hypotenuse in red ink over here. By the Pythagorean theorem, the length of this hypotenuse is just the square root of delta x squared plus delta y whole squared. Now this xy hypotenuse is just another leg of the right triangle with capital S as the hypotenuse, or line segment as the hypotenuse. The opposite leg in this case is delta z, so that means that capital S squared by another application of the Pythagorean theorem is given by delta x whole squared plus delta y whole squared plus delta z whole squared. Now can we rewrite this equation for capital S squared in matrix form? Of course we can. If I define a vector called delta R as a three-dimensional vector composed of the components delta X, delta Y, and delta Z, then my capital S squared is really just the dot product of delta R with itself. If you remember a bit of linear algebra, I can also rewrite this dot product as the matrix product of the transpose of delta R and delta R itself. And you can easily show this to yourself by plugging in the delta R. If you take the matrix product of delta R transpose, so this row vector with delta R itself, so this column vector, you just end up with the sum of the squares of delta X, delta Y, and delta Z for your S squared, which is what we started out with. Now, beyond just writing the dot product of delta R with itself using the matrix product of delta R transpose with itself, I can rewrite this capital S squared once again as the transpose of delta R times a 3 by 3 matrix G times delta R. I'm going to call this equation 1. In this particular case, the matrix G will just be the identity matrix because that way we end up with the dot product of delta R with itself to get the distance between the points A and B in our three-dimensional space. And remember, we want the dot product of delta R with itself to be the square distance because the magnitude of the displacement needs to be the distance by definition. So to conclude, if you want to find the separation or the distance between two points in three-dimensional Euclidean space, you can calculate the separation vector or the displacement vector given by delta R and perform this matrix product given by equation 1 to get the squared separation or the squared distance between your two points. In this particular case, because G is just an identity matrix, equation 1 is basically the same as multiplying the transpose of a three-dimensional displacement vector with the vector itself. This is pretty simple stuff that pretty much all of you should be familiar with already. But things change a little bit when we go back to special relativity. In special relativity, instead of dealing with your garden variety three-dimensional Euclidean space like we did just now, we're dealing with four-dimensional Minkowski space-time, where the space coordinates x, y, and z are also paired with a time coordinate. Recall from my previous video that if I want to find the separation between two points or two events, a and b, given by their coordinates with the respective subscripts in Minkowski space-time, you use the space-time interval given by s squared, which is the sum of negative c delta t squared plus the sum of squares of delta x, delta y, and delta z. And having s squared constructed this way is essential in order to derive the results of time dilation and length contraction as I went over in a previous video. What I can do now is that I can construct a four-dimensional space-time displacement vector, which again I'll call delta R, and then write my delta R as made up of the difference between the time components of events A and B, which I'll call delta T, and the difference in the spatial components, delta X, delta Y, delta Z. This is similar to what I just did with my displacement vector in three-dimensional space, but now I've also got a time displacement as the first component. 
Now one way I'll modify this is that because I want the units of all the components in my displacement vector to be consistent, I should also multiply the time displacement component by a speed, the speed of light in this case. Just like what I did with my three-dimensional displacement vector, I also need to be able to show that the squared magnitude of my four-dimensional displacement vector is equal to the space-time interval S squared. Again, I want the magnitude of my displacement vector to be equal to the distance in space-time, just like the magnitude of the displacement vector in three-dimensional space is equal to the distance in three-dimensional space. And just like before, the way that I can show this is to write my S squared as the dot product of delta R with itself. This is what it would look like if I expressed my delta R in terms of its column vector. But based on the equation, on the definition of S squared that I've written up here, that would mean that this dot product of the displacement vector with itself in Minkowski spacetime has to equal the negative squared of C times the time separation plus the sum of squares of the spatial separations. I'm going to call this vector equation equation 2. The problem though with this equation is that if I take the simple dot product of these two column vectors by taking the matrix product of the transpose of my four-dimensional displacement delta r with delta r itself, just like we did with our three-dimensional case, then the answer you get is the magnitude squared of all four components summed together. But this is not the answer we want. This is not the distance squared between two events in Minkowski spacetime. Remember, we want the magnitude squared of our displacement to be equal to the square distance. But that is not the case when we use the simple dot product. The distance squared in Minkowski spacetime, as you'll see up here, has a negative sign in front of the time separation and a positive sign in front of the spatial separations. But when we use the simple dot product, we get a positive sign in front of everything. So what this means is that if I want the magnitude squared of my displacement vector delta r to equal the standard distance in Minkowski spacetime, I can't just use the simple dot product. I need to use a modified dot product, and that modified dot product needs to have the property that if I take the dot product of the vector with itself, I get a negative sign for the first term and a positive sign for the other three terms. I can't just take the matrix product of a vector and its transpose to get my dot product. I need to change my approach to something that's modified. And how do I modify that dot product? How do I change my approach? Well, let me bring back equation 1 again, in which I had this matrix G in between the transpose of delta R and delta R itself. For good old three-dimensional Euclidean space, our matrix G was just the 3 by 3 identity matrix. But because now we're looking for a modified dot product for four-dimensional Minkowski spacetime, the matrix G is not necessarily the same, it's different. To find this matrix, let's go back to equation 2, which I'll copy-paste here. Remember from linear algebra that I can write a vector in terms of some basis vectors and its components. So for example, I can write the vector 2 and 3 as 2 times the 1, 0 basis vector, or the i hat basis vector, and 3 times the 0, 1 basis vector, or the j hat basis vector. In a similar manner, I can rewrite the left-hand side of equation 2 using the basis vectors for our four-dimensional spacetime, which I'll label as E sub 0 for the first component, the time component, and then E sub 1, 2, and 3 for the other x, y, z components, the spatial components. Note here that I'm denoting the basis vectors with an underline. When I use the basis vectors and express my displacement vector delta r as the combination of these basis vectors multiplied by the values of the components, this is what I get for my equation 2. Now the dot product can be distributed over addition. That's one of its properties. So if I distribute out my dot product, this is what I'll end up with. I'm going to call this equation 3. Now notice that in going from the line above to equation 3, I've already significantly simplified things a great deal. Since there's no cross terms in the right hand side, like a term where delta t might be multiplying delta x for instance, that means the dot product of two different basis vectors is zero, so we have an orthogonal basis. And because we have an orthogonal basis, that greatly simplifies things and that's how I got equation 3. So if we now compare the left hand side to the right hand side, we find that the dot product of the e0 basis vectors has to be negative 1 while the dot products of the E1, E2, and E3 basis vectors has to be positive 1. So if we rewrite my space-time interval S squared in terms of a matrix product involving the displacement vector delta R, then because I've now computed the values of the basis vector dot products, I can now write my matrix G as a diagonal matrix, but with negative 1 as the first element like so.
Each element of G, or G sub ij, is just the dot product of the ith basis vector in Minkowski space with the jth basis vector. This is pretty much what we found when we compared the left and right hand sides of equation 3. The dot product of two different basis vectors is zero because there's no cross terms in my space-time distance, and this corresponds to my matrix G only having diagonal elements. All the non-diagonal elements which would correspond to the dot product of different basis vectors are zero, just like we have up here. Meanwhile, the diagonal elements have a non-zero dot product, but the wrinkle here is that the dot product of the time basis vectors, so E0 dot E0, is negative 1 instead of the usual 1, which we have for the spatial basis vectors. Now this matrix G with negative 1 as the first element and positive 1 as the other diagonal elements, this matrix represents a tensor, and that tensor has a special name. It's called a Minkowski metric tensor, or the Minkowski metric, and it's often written with the symbol eta instead of G. It might not be obvious to you what the significance of the Minkowski metric is right now, but let's once again recall our three-dimensional Euclidean space. We know from earlier in the video that in three-dimensional Euclidean space, you get the distance between two points by drawing a straight line between those two points, and by using the Pythagorean theorem to calculate the length of that straight line. In this situation, the matrix G I got when I rewrote this distance equation in terms of a matrix product involving the displacement vector was just the 3 by 3 identity matrix. This basically told me that in order to get the distance between two points in Euclidean space, I can just do a simple sum of squares of the deltas in the x, y, and z coordinates between those two points. In other words, this G, this metric tensor, gave me valuable information and basically told me how to calculate the distance between two points in Euclidean space. This same principle applies to eta, the Minkowski metric. It gives you information about how to calculate distances between two points in Minkowski spacetime. It tells you that you need to take the negative squared of the time component, that's the negative one, and the positive squares of the spatial components to get your spacetime distance. Now, in general, for a more complicated geometry, like if you're on the surface of a sphere, for instance, the metric tensor corresponding to that geometry will be different, because the way to calculate the distance between two points on a sphere is to measure the length of the arc on the great circle connecting those two points. You can't just take the sum of squares of the differences between the coordinates of the two points on a sphere, because you're not allowed to burrow through a sphere and measure the line between those two points. If you're restricted to to the surface of a sphere, then you can only measure along the geodesics of that sphere to calculate the distance between those two points. And that's why the metric tensor is going to be different on the surface of a sphere. Now in some more complicated geometries, instead of these simple 1, 1, 1 diagonal components, you might have elements that depend on location, like you do in the case of a sphere. In some cases, you might even have off-diagonal components, like you do in warp drive geometries. But these more complicated situations really only come up in general relativity. The only metric tensor that really matters in special relativity is the Minkowski metric that we've written here. Anyway, that should do it for this video. Hopefully you've got a good understanding of the Minkowski metric. In the next few videos, I'm going to go into more detail on relativistic dynamics by discussing four vectors. I'd like to thank the following patrons for their support, and if you enjoyed the video, feel free to like and subscribe. This is the Faculty of Khan, signing out.